big warm welcome here at Roku's. Uh, well, what more can I say? This is going to be an interesting beer. It certainly looks interesting. Um, and surprisingly, you could probably mistake this for um, Polish. Although it's not actually a Polish beer, because the reason why I say you could mistake it for Polish is because of the bird on the front there. But as clearly you can see, it says the famous beer of Mauritius. Mauritius then, a beautiful country with golden sands, nice weather. What more could you ask for? Uh, this then is a 330ml bottle, coming in at just 5%. So again, quite an ordinary standard lager, or beer as it were. Um, it's produced and bottled in Mauritius. And get this, it has also won four awards. As you can see on the front there. And I'll tell you what those awards are. They are gold medals for 1981, 89, 2003, 2008, 2009. And it won the Monday Selection Grand Gold Medal in 2007. It also won the Australian International Beer Award. And it won gold in 2001. And it also won the Brewex Gold Medal in 1983. So already this beer then has got a lot of awards to its name. Just like Tiger though, just like the Tiger beer review that we did, doesn't mean that the more medals that it's won, the tastier the beer. We found, for example, that some of the beers that are unheard of, or even well known such as Stella, are generally a better tasting beer. But that's what we're here to find out. And I'm interested in this, quite honestly, because with medals like that and making claims like that, this has got to be a good lager, but... I'm not going to hold anything to it. It may well surprise you. It may well not. It might be a crappy beer. It might be a nice beer. Who knows? Medals are just medals. The taste, or the proof is in the taste, shall I say. For any cap lovers, again, I know I keep doing it, and you guys must be getting bloody bored of these by now, but I know there are some cap enthusiasts that love collecting caps. Um, there we go. So it emulates the famous beer of Mauritius, Phoenix, since 1963. Now, if it's been since 1963, my question already goes to, how the hell can it win a medal in 80s if it was only from 60s? That's what it claims, anyway. Uh, 1981, it says to 89. Well, they want to get their facts right. When was this beer brewed? Who knows? But either way, this looks good and interesting. The head, then, is quite big, I'd say. Um, very, very fluffy. Big bubbles in the head there, which is always a good sign of a beer. Um, if I can just get rid of the... <laughs> there we go. Streams of carbonation heading to the top there, you know, giving it a head. So this looks quite cool. One fact before I start any of the testing and the smelling, as you know. I always like to give facts if I can and any food references. Food references, I don't know any of any. But I do know this. The water in this beer allows to produce the beer, obviously, to natural methods. And the maturing of the beer, when they make this and they let it settle, etc., that's what we mean by maturing, is very controlled. So they like to control it. So that's quite useful to know. So then, let's crack on with the smell. Okay, this is quite interesting. Right, I'm picking up a few things there. Again, um, right, hold on, just give me two seconds. Yeah, definitely what I thought. Okay, right, straight away there's a grassy, grassy smell with like a floral hop. Um, and a little bit of corn. And as sad and as weird as it sounds, and it... Please do not let this put off your beer. It kind of smells that sweaty sort of smell as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, you know, someone's, you know, sweated in this beer, for example, but it's kind of that sort of enclosed sweaty smell nearly. But yeah, definitely grassy, floral, hoppy smell. Somewhat complex, I'd say. Yeah, so it looks attractive. It's kind of um, pale golden colour like most beers generally are I mean there's very few and far between that get differences in the colour uh, right so on with the taste ooh mm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. Interesting. Right, where do I begin? Right, um, okay, so straight away there's a hop bite. That just grabs me straight away. Somewhat brash as well, you know, it's not easy. It just comes across quite quickly. Uh, very sweet. It's like a sweet malty taste. It's crisp and clean. It kind of finishes the sweetness off with that clean taste and then you get a crisp sensation. Uh, I would say then this is probably more like a semi-pilsner. I wouldn't say it is a pilsner. Somewhere between your beer and pilsner range, I would have said. Um, it's well balanced. It's nice and balanced in the flavour, that's what I mean to say. Uh, and easy, easily drunk. I'd say there's no distinctive taste to it. You know, there's no wow factor again. Um, I'd say it's above average, really. Yeah, above average. And it's like a grainy taste as well. I'm getting a grainy, dry taste as well. Um, and, and very soft carbonation, I must add. Very soft carbonation. Especially when drinking this, it comes through quite quickly. Something I, I generally like. I like the, the kind of beers that are nice, you know, carbonation-wise and taste. The head then is very light and fluffy. Uh, good lacing all the way around the beer again. This is becoming a trend I've noticed with some of the beers from hotter countries, uh, including our Desperados as well, as you saw, and uh, the Left video, which is up and coming. Left Blonde, that is. We've done a review on Left Royale already, so if you haven't, check that out. So, yeah, it's quite a nice beer then. Um, is it worthy of all those awards? Ah, it's hard to say. I believe it should won a few awards for its its grassy floral hoppy taste because that is quite nice um, but again I, I, I don't think I would go to say that it should have won many many awards I'm not going to knock it for that because back in the 80s probably there wasn't you know so many beers as there is nowadays um, right okay well I've already made my mind up with this then it's going to be a 7.5 out of 10. Because, again, I like the floral hoppy taste. but And I like the gentle carbonation taste. But again, you know, it's just above average really. But not a bad beer. If you, if you, if you want to come and grab this from us, uh, by all means do so. We always estimate prices. We'll give you prices. And again, we always ship overseas. So if you want to come in and grab this and try it for yourself. And perhaps make your own mind up about this beer. You can come and get it from us directly. Don't forget, guys and girls and fans alike and beer lovers alike, add us on our um, Facebook page at Ruku's Beer. If you're checking out on this channel, which I'm sure you are, go down to the About bit on the little tab thing and uh, click on that and you'll get a link there to our Facebook page. On there you can expect pictures of beer, such as as in real time sometimes you can get some funny stuff on there as well that we like to do just to give you a little bit of a boost in your day and we also give you some beers to avoid and one of our latest recent posts was something to do with um, a beer from Vietnam which tasted like crap so yeah avoid that one so don't forget subscribe to our channel post it on your friends walls on Facebook and spread the word of Roku uh, we're always welcoming new fans. Any comments, feel free to comment. I give you then Phoenix Beer from Mauritius. And it's a 7 out, seven and a half out of 10. So, until next time, fans, come in with your suggestions and let us know what beers you want reviewing. And we'll do our best to review them. Right, so that leaves me to say goodbye and farewell. <laughs>